In this video, I'm going to explain to you where the, the convertible drain holes are on the car and hopefully how to avoid getting them clogged and ending up with water in the cabin. So there are two. There's one in this big bucket here which sits directly underneath the motor on each side and there's one there that lives underneath this seal. And when, let's put this seal in. So the seal on the back of the what they call a tension bow, which is the big bar that runs around the back of the roof, when you raise and lower the roof, it's on a track that at this pivot point at the front here, it'll do that when you lower it and it'll raise to about that position there. You'll have the canvas sitting about there. So the water that comes off the side of the roof is going to go down either into the holes here or the holes at the front. So it's going to go down into both of those. When it goes down into the, the seal in here, there's a hose that's connected there. And then as the seal lowers, it points I think forward like that and it's going to bend like that because it's attached to the motor mechanism at the bottom and it's going to do that. So anything that comes down here is going to go through this tube and down the bottom there. But this one here is just going to end up here and just go down the, the holes there. And where does it go to? There are two drain holes behind here and the only way to get access to those to clear those out down here is to remove this panel it's called the door entry guard i made a video of how to remove that it's uh, a little bit extensive to get to that especially on the left hand side um, but i'll put a link to the video in the description of how you get to that but basically for those there is a valve with a sort of a rubber flap over the front of it so water can flow out of it but bugs and stuff can't get inside it but unfortunately it will still clog up because there's a bit of a bend and everything down the bottom there the problem though is that if that gets clogged then if it overflow if this one here gets clogged it's going to flow out the back here and whilst some of it is going to go into here this isn't perfectly sealed that bucket so what it's going to do, and you'd have to follow it all the way down here, but it actually comes out the seat, well not the seatbelt hole, but down near the seatbelt, and we'll just go underneath the, the floor of the car and go and fill up where the rear BCM is and that sort of thing and the amplifier on the right hand side, which is bad. By a similar note, if this one here overflows, because this fills up and this is all clogged up, it's just going to overflow over the front here and it's going to go to the same place. So clearly keeping these things clean is going to be key. So for the rear bucket here, firstly, how do I keep stuff from getting in there? I reckon, because there are only really small holes here, for leaves and stuff to get down there would be really hard. I reckon a lot of it is from when people lower the roof and there's debris on the roof. Obviously everything's gonna get folded up, but then eventually some of that is gonna end up inside the bay. And when I removed the roof of this, this car, there was lots of gunk uh, underneath it just on that carpet that sits in the bottom of the convertible bay and that's all designed to flow down into here so it overlaps all of this so if there's any water or anything it all ends up here which means it's going to end up in this bucket now you've got these pins here that are designed to stop stuff getting down into the hole so it doesn't get clogged but eventually stuff's going to get down there but if i do want to clear this out you can remove the uh, the wind blockers at the back with the roof up and you'll be able to see in the back if there's lots of stuff in there. I get a vacuum cleaner into there pretty regularly. Uh, I would also advocate occasionally putting the roof into service position so you can get in underneath here, get a vacuum cleaner, maybe some compressed air and try and get the stuff underneath here out of the way because the motor sits like that. You won't be able to see any of the stuff. You'll just need to get a vacuum cleaner in there and hopefully suck some of that stuff out. And then finally, to clear the drain hole itself, the way this works is when the roof is all the way on, it, that hose is gonna be sitting like that. When you lower it, it does that, and it puts this hose into a bit of a bend. And if you have the roof lowered, so it's got about a foot, foot and a half to go, this opens up quite nicely and you can see down in here. Unfortunately, this is gonna be in the way and you'll need to get a torch because all this is really dark. 
uh, to see the drain hole and you can just get a dowel or something like that and just move this out of the way gently and you'll be able to see down in here. And you've got to see firstly if there is gunk down in there, but also if you had a compressed air gun with a long flexible hose, that's where I'd be shoving that down in there and blowing all the gunk down the bottom and hopefully out of those one-way valves down the bottom. So after you remove the door entry guard, this is what you'll see. I'll see this is the, the intake here. There'll be two uh, nuts that can be removed. They're just using a 10 mil socket. So remove those, then the intake just pops straight out. And that's where the two valves are at the bottom of the two drain holes. This one here is for the one that's underneath the big bucket, underneath the motor. And this is the one that's forward in the, the forward seal. These can just unscrew out. They've just got a little flapper valve of rubber in there that uh, holds uh, <laughs> holds all the gunk in place but obviously stops the bugs and stuff like that from uh, getting in there. But the interesting thing was that this car clearly uh, had lived under a tree for most of its life. There was so much debris uh, underneath the front and rear lids near the windscreen and that sort of thing. And these holes were pretty clogged and all I did was from the top get some uh, compressed air with just a tube like that and I stuck it down from the top and just blew everything out and I wanted to see how clean it was, whether or not there was still full of gunk. And when I opened these up, there was next to nothing inside. So what it tells me is you don't have to get into here and unclog these. If you do it from the top, and I'll show you, hopefully you're about to see this. This is from the bucket. If I just get that tube and I just push it down, you'll see, I'm not sure if you can see that, but I can see that there. So it will come all the way down to the bottom and blow compressed air straight and just blow all the gunk out. You may even want to just get a, um, a tube with some, some water because things will dry out just to maybe loosen things up a little bit as well once you think you've cleared most things out but that comes out there and the other one so this is from that forward uh, drain hole the upper one push that down and there it is it just comes straight out there so easily that is going to blow anything out with some compressed air and with the roof open about a foot and that flap here open if you look down here there's that hose that we looked at before and all I need to do is get something I'm just using a screwdriver here and just move that to the side and I'm not sure if you can see but straight down there underneath that is that drain hole Move this seal and get access to the drain hole underneath is a little bit more involved I would have the roof in that same position that we talked about before so about maybe a foot, foot and a half to go before it's fully lowered. And what that will do is the main part of the roof that's gonna be rotating up when you lift the roof will be sitting back here. So it's not gonna be impeding on this seal here. And it's gonna be open enough so the valve here is fully open and everything is about as open as it's going to be so you can get access to everything in here. And once you do that, we need to remove firstly this piece of trim here, which is sitting there. The way we do that, there's going to be a plastic piece, which is that one there, which is going to be sitting down the side here. There's a single clip underneath there. You can either use a plastic pry tool underneath here, or just get your fingers and unclip that. There's also going to be that clip there, and there's also a little plunger that goes in there, but that clip there, that's going to be in that metal bracket. You're going to get your fingers underneath there and pull that out. It's going to be sitting over a little sort of, there's a couple of knobs here, so you just need to lift that up. And then finally, this piece here is going to be poking into the trim around the rollover bar. You can just slide that out, and then that can just get left down the side there. Now, interestingly, this car didn't have uh, a, a particular part that you'll need to remove, and this is the one on the other side. The top of that trim that sits over the top there, there are two knobs on the underside that go into these holes in this little bracket here. So that should have been sitting here, but it had been removed from the car for some reason. And it's attached, as you can see, with two screws. Now these are designed so that you can loosen those screws, pull that rearward, and then pop that out. And if you have a look at the, the piece of metal there, you can see where it's supposed to, when it's fully installed, it's pushed forward, so you can loosen them off and pull it rearward, and then pull it up and out. Getting it out is not too bad, but to, to install it is quite difficult. That's clearly the way it's designed to be done, but it's quite difficult to put it in there, to actually get these installed with that. So if you're struggling to either get it out or get it in, I would remove those screws, they're both T25, 
take those out, remove the bracket. Be really careful you don't drop anything because there's not a whole bunch of room to move in here. I would use a magnetic tool to pull everything out and to install it later on. Uh, and then once uh, that comes out, then this thing can get pulled out. Be a little bit careful with it. It's obviously a fairly convoluted piece of rubber. Um, and for installing, make sure you have a good look at all of these bits of where things go. When you're putting it down, I would, because you'll have a little bit of room at the back here, to feed your hand down there and put that there down in this slot here. And then the slot at the front Make sure you have the seal here removed. That's really easy to feed back up here later on. You just pull that out. But then you can feed that in there. And it might take a little bit of practice to get it into the right position. To remove the seal along the side here to get access to the drain hole underneath, lift the roof up just a little bit like this. So it's up about a foot or so, so this flap is open. And you don't add any further than that, otherwise the arms are going to start to impinge on the seal. Get your pry tool underneath here, unclip those two, lift it up off the top and then slide it out from the rollover bar trim that can just get put to the side. There'll be a piece of plastic here over the little seat belt, a piece of steel there, just pull that off and get that out of the way. And then you'll have access to the two torque screws underneath here, you'll just need to loosen those off. And with those loose, now what we can do is push rearwards on the, the seal and then lift it up and it'll come out of those slots that are in there and you can take that out. And now we have access to that drain hole. For installation, remove the seal or just pull it out a little bit like that. And what we're going to do is feed this down at the back first and make sure that slot goes in where it needs to go on a, a flange down the back here and then at the front here and then we're going to push it rearwards, slot it down into here and then move it forward. Like that. Make sure it's on the side here nice and flush. If it's not, pull it out and have another go. It takes a little bit of practice and then you can tighten those back up again. With the seal, feed it into here first. Make sure it's all in the correct position and all that rubber is in the right spot. And then you can push it into place down here. That can now go over the top. And when you're fitting this, first thing we're gonna do is slot that onto the trim on the rollover bar. Be careful, this is made of two bits and it's easy to detach those, so be nice and gentle. So we slot that over there like that. And then we're gonna look in here and the pins that go into that metal bracket underneath, make sure they're aligned correctly. Don't push them in just yet. So I find that this is, if you don't do it the right way, it's hard to fit. Now once they're actually aligned in, they're not pushed in, they've still got another maybe half a centimetre to go. Lift it up over the top here and feel until it clicks into place on those two knobs at the top here. And once that's in place and the seal here is in right position, then we can push those two clips into place and everything's going to be correct.